Hi, I'm Lynn Widmeyer, and with me today is Lisa Yilmaz, who is the most recent winner, and I have to read this because it's such a long title, <laughs> of Shepherd University Center for Appalachian Studies and Communities West Virginia Fiction Competition. So we're gonna to talk to Lisa about a uh, little bit about her story and her writing, but before we do, Lisa, who picked your story as the top winner? Barbara Kingsolver. Barbara Kingsolver. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, she is the most recent winner of the Pulitzer Prize for fiction. I mean, come on. So we're gonna talk a little bit about Barbara and Lisa, but before we do, can you, Tell us a little bit about this competition that you just won. Well, and the story that won it. Sylvia Sherbet is in charge of the Appalachian Study Program at Shepherd University, and yearly they have a writer in residence. And Barbara Kingsolver was 2022's. Wow! And so, I have a friend who incur knows that I've been uh, learning how to become a writer. And she said you should apply for the, or submit for the competition part. Somehow I got picked to be, and then she, then I got picked by their panel of people, Shepherd University's panel, or you know Sylvia Sherbet's panel, and then that group of people, those stories were sent to Barbara, and she picked mine. <laughs> This is probably the closest I will ever get to your Pulitzer Prize winner is sitting next to someone who's talked to a Pulitzer Prize yeah, winner. So that. I'm happy to be here. So tell us, you know, what, what was your story about and where can people read it? Let's start off with okay, that. Okay, so the, my story is called Lambs and it's an excerpt it's terrific. of a novel that I have been writing, it seems, forever. Because as I said before, I'm a beginning writer I'm learning how to do everything from grammar to characterization to plot to everything. And it's not easy. It's not easy. And this will be in the anthology for this year, 2023, which, which is already out. It's, it, and I'm sure you can get it at Four Seasons yes. Bookstore. Yes. How do you get the inspiration for this book? This, so that we're Williams, doing, well, this book started because I had read, a, I think I want to say a Vanity Fair article many, many years ago about um, a movie, Atomic Blonde, with Charlize Theron. Oh, I'll have to put that on my Okay, list. and the reason that it struck me was because at that time, there were, the, ar the article stated that there weren't very many strong female characters in movies. And so that, but now since it's been so long since I finished this novel, since I have not finished this novel, <laughs> There have been more female characters that are strong in movies and in stories, but uh, but that kind of struck me as important. And so, writing what you know, this area, the area that I grew up in, which is um, South Central West Virginia, um, we have an opioid crisis, and there's and I was involved in uh, the West Virginia. Human Rights Commission. That's right. And so I had the rare opportunity. And you're a nurse. And I'm a nurse. And I had the rare opportunity to be acquainted with some people who deal with this every day with, you know, um, children who are trafficked or females who are trafficked, even, you know, m mostly females, young females are trafficked, human trafficked in the state of West Virginia and obviously other places. And so just in conversation with those people, because they relate, they have to deal with this every day in their lives, I created a character that was going to be, that was trafficked, that will eventually hopefully become the heroine. Now, but this is not finished. She, she so. did not in this, no, not not in this, this story. story. This story so this is something to look forward in to. the perspective from the, the man who snatches people. And, and let me say, I, and that's not always the way they do it, but this was one particular situation. It was chilling. I mean, it left me with goosebumps. Yeah. And so interestingly, I, you know, he takes the girls and puts them in a truck, in a semi, but Barbara Kingsolver gave me some suggestions about that. And so I changed it a little bit for this story. 
And I got, had an opportunity of going, I have someone that I know who, I wanted to know about a refrigerator truck. So they said, oh, come down to- We'll lock you, know, you up in one. Yeah, we'll lock you up in one. They exactly, they was. Was. Yes, exactly. We'll lock you up in one and you pound on the door. It's not funny. I know, oh, I, okay. I appreciate it. It's not funny, but it is not funny, but uh, you will lock you up in the refrigerator truck. You pound on the door and we, you can see I'll pound, I'll get in there. I'll pound on the door so you can hear. And what happens- yeah, it, 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 That must have been sort of scary to, what was for it? you to be in there and pounding and- And thinking that you couldn't get out. And thinking you and couldn't you get cold. out. And it was interesting because what I learned was when those trucks are parked at truck stops, they just run because they have to keep the food refrigerated. Oh. So they just run. So you cannot hear when a bunch of trucks are running. How it's interesting. interesting. And a lot of the times, the, and then when I, my, the people that I know who deal with this, they said, well, the people who are trafficked, they're so broken that they don't have oh. the, um, you would think, oh, just bang on the door or scream or whatever, but they're so already broken people that a lot of the times they don't have the courage or they don't have the trust in themselves or others that they could and escape that's, that's or try to escape. where your heroine's gonna come in. Though. And that's where my gonna... heroine is gonna come in and hopefully other people along the way will help her. But you know, you in stories, you always have- You have to wait for yeah. the novel to well, find you out. You always have to have like tragic, you know, or whatever, what do you call it? Inciting incidences and danger and tension. Tension is what it tension. is. Tension. Now, yes. w one of the things that Barbara Kingsolver talked about was she's always had a passion for writing, yes. but she really didn't, uh, you know, all through school, even though she was a science major and you were, were majoring nurse. in nursing. Mm -hmm. So have you always had a passion for I've writing? always liked to, I always thought that I would write something at some did point. Did you keep journals and I everything? did. I do you keep did. journals and um, I had opportunity, whenever I had an assignment that required a little more, you know, inventive or creativity, then I wouldn't gravitate towards that. I'm pretty observant because of nursing. Oh, so I mm -hmm. can like, that's what I love about people's um, voices, their emotions, their, you know, the, who they, their characters, what makes them angry, what makes them happy. And it feels- And that comes out in your short story. The, the girls that are involved, they okay. are so well drawn. Well, like I said, it's a process and I've been learning, so. So what, what did Barbara, what was the best advice that Barbara Kingsolver? Well, she, she did a critique of my story, like a handwritten critique, which I have in, and, and she, we might be seeing that on Antiques Roadshow one That's day. Right. I know. <laughs> with her notes. With her notes. And then, so what was interesting was one of the things she said was the story lacked a moral center. Ah, so when I won that. and you know, you have the opportunity to revise your story based upon her recommendations, which I, you know, 100% support revising that story because you don't, you know, someone gives you that a advice. Surprise That's right. I and mean, then I on. think that you should really try. She said it lacked a moral center and I'm thinking, well, what is that? What is that? So I had to research it over the summer. If you think of it in a movie, it's always the character of a very minor character who propels the, you know, the main character forward because at that moment, that main character needs hope. And so it, you can- And so does the reader. And so does the reader. <laughs> they need hope. Mm -hmm. And I guess my first iteration was not very hopeful. <laughs> and so she said, you really need to add some moral center to this. And I think that I did. Well. You know, and after, but it took a while. Cause I you know, wasn't quite sure what she meant because it's a learning process. Now, Barbara Kingsolver at the uh, uh, ripe old age, <laughs> <laughs> of 30, um, decided she was going to give up her science background, her, her working in the lab, you know, she had it, and pursue writing full time. Now, have you reached that point? No, 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 not at this point. I'm still very, you know, a novice. I'm, I still am developing stories. Obviously, I haven't finished a novel or even a first draft of a novel. And even once after you get that first draft, you have to revise it many, many, many times. And it may not even be the story that you started out with. So I am not so we're, we, ready we to do that. We, we shouldn't put the book on reserve yet at no, Four Seasons. No, no. <laughs> You're a very talented lady. You, 
terrific golfer. We were bridge partners for oh, yes, we many years. Bridge. So where does uh, raising your family, where where does um, writing fit into your life right now well, with all your interests? Well, I do commit to it. You know, they say you should commit to something, putting some words to the page every day. I wouldn't say that I do it every day, but I do am, I have it where I am. I'm not scheduled, but I do something related to writing almost every day, whether it's reading or take, you know, writing some notes down or actually revising a story that I'm still working on. And we're so happy you're here in Jefferson County. And I always ask, how did you end up in Jefferson County? You're a native West Virginia. I'm a native West Virginia. But how did, I'm, I'm we, from how did we get you from to this part of the state? My husband uh, and I met at WVU. He's a local orthodontist. We moved to the area because it's still West Virginia, but it's a growing part of West Virginia and uh, raised our two children here. Yes. Well, I'm so happy you found our part of the state. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Oh, and I look so forward for to following energy. your career. And we did have fun playing bridge. We did as have partners, fun bridge. And you're the life master. You well, stuck to I'm, it. I'm done with bridge. I, I feel like I can I have a little time to become a life master. <laughs> yes, you do. You're my, she's much younger. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lynn.